Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still working on uh, engineering science and for working on uh, hydraulics. So in this part, in this platform, we are going to be focusing with the question paper of November 2022. So we are given on question five, that is a question on hydraulics here, given to list any three types of accumulators in this case, and that is uh, three marks for that, okay? So we, I'm good, I've got uh, some of the uh, answers that you can actually consider here being uh, the mass loaded or the weight loaded accumulator, uh, the spring loaded accumulator, the air or gas type uh, accumulator in this case, all right? So we're given to mention three, so that means we've got three marks uh, for that. All right, so that was the first part of the question. Uh, given 5.2, now we are uh, given that a mass loaded accumulator. Now, if you are to check guys, previously they are giving you here to mention the three types. Now they are giving you an answer here to say a mass loaded accumulator, which means failure to list this one, you are already given another answer also here, a mass loaded accumulator. Okay, so uh, that is how they can do in some other uh, questions. Okay, so let's just see. Uh, here we are given uh, the mass, okay? Mo the mass loaded accumulator is a ram with a diameter of 350 millimeters and a mass of uh, 650 kgs. Okay, so from the ram side, we are given uh, the mass of 650 uh, kgs and also the diameter being uh, 350 uh, millimeters, which you convert to meters by dividing by 1,000. This is going to be 0 0.35 meters, all right? Also, we're given the hydraulic uh, pressure being one mega uh, pascal. So we're given the pressure in this case uh, of one mega pascal. And also we are given is required by the machine it, uh, it serves and also the ram moves through a distance of 250 millimeters in six seconds. So here we are given the height, uh, the distance. So you can just save this as S or as H, uh, which is 250 uh, millimeters in a time frame of uh, six seconds in this case during uh, the working stroke. So the question is to calculate on the first part 5.21, the additional mass required to act as a weight in order to obtain the required hydraulic pressure in order to have this pressure, but as it acts as weight in this case. All right, so this is what we are given. So that means from the weight part, uh, in order for it to act as uh, a weight, uh, carbon, we, are, uh, we are going to have the weight uh, being equivalent uh, from the for, from the pressure, we are going to consider the force uh, from there because weight and force, they are related. But here we are considering the weight. Here we are considering the force from the pressure. Remember, we are considering from the working pressure. So this is from our pressure. All right. So how can we calculate the additional mass? Because here we know that the total force A in this case, uh, we let's just have this as the additional mass uh, here. The additional mass is going to be equal to uh, the total mass that we are going to have from the total weight. So we are going to have uh, the total uh, mass minus uh, the, for the mass that we have originally here. We have got the mass from the RAM of uh, 650 kgs. So we are going to subtract that one. Okay, so the total mass is the one that we are given a consideration that the accumulator is to, the way it is to act as weight in order to obtain the required hydraulic pressure. So meaning to say from the weight that it is acting from, we know that weight is equivalent uh, to the mass times the gravitational acceleration, which is the total mass that we are going to have. But the force here, like I said, is going to be taken uh, from the pressure. Remember that uh, our pressure here uh, is equivalent to force over area. 
and we have this, got this pressure, we have got the diameter, so we can calculate our area. So that means our force is going to be PA. If we cross multiply, this is over one. So one times F is F, P times A is going to be PA. That is pressure times what? Times area, where your area is taken from uh, pi D squared over four. So that means we can have this from uh, from the given uh, from the given pressure and the diameter, we can have our force, all right? So we can calculate this force, or we can just substitute into the formula that we're given. Remember, our purpose here is to calculate the total mass so that we can have our additional mass. So to calculate the total mass, we can simply divide by the gravitational acceleration here. Gravitational acceleration, that means, uh, sorry, uh, we are supposed to cancel the gravitational acceleration. So that means our total mass is going to be the force, which we said it's uh, pressure times area. So it's going to be pressure times the area, which is pi d squared over 4. So we're going to have pi d squared over 4 like this, everything over g. So we are going to have our total mass here. So the pressure which is of uh, uh, 1 megapascal is going to be 1 times 10 to the exponent of 6 times the area that is going to be pi d squared. Remember our, our diameter in meters, that's 0 0.35 squared, uh, that's d squared over 4. So everything is going to be over 4 in this case, all right? So we got over 4 here. And the answer that you're going to have from this is supposed to be divided to the gravitational acceleration of 9,8. So here we have the total mass from the weight it is acting as we obtain the total mass from there. Uh, that is going to be 9,817,477 uh, kilograms. But this is not the additional mass that is required. Remember, here we need the additional mass which is going to be the total mass minus the mass at the RAM. So here, our additional mass, therefore, our additional mass is going to be equivalent to the total mass that we had. So the total mass in this case is uh, 9,817.477 minus uh, the mass that we had before on the RAM in this case, which is uh, 650. So we are going to subtract this one to obtain uh, the additional uh, mass in this case, all right, which is going to be uh, in kgs because everything that we had in this case was in kgs. So we're going to obtain 9,167,477 uh, if you are to simplify this properly. This is in uh, kgs. Okay, so we've got the additional mass that is needed. Uh, let's check the other part. Here we are now given to calculate the work done by the arm during the working stroke of the machine itself. So the work done, which part is going to give us uh, the work done? All right, with the mass that we have calculated, the total mass and the distance here, we can be able to calculate our work done here because we've got the total mass and also we have got uh, the, the height, which is the distance being moved and the gravitational acceleration. So remember that, uh, Right, so let me just write this 5.22. Remember that the work done can be taken from the force times the distance, where this is given uh, from uh, the total of mass that we have got in this case. So this is going to be the total mass times the gravitational acceleration times the distance, which is, uh, in this case, the mass of uh, 9817 comma four seven seven times the gravitational acceleration of nine comma eight times the distance we have got our distance of uh, two uh, hundred fifty millimeters which is same as uh, zero comma two five in meters if we divide uh, by one thousand so that's zero point two five all right so whatever that you're going to have here we are going to multiply by zero point two five so this gives us uh, the work done, uh, which is actually, let's just have this step so that we do not uh, confuse with the weight, okay? So our work done is going to be 24,005, so this is 052, all right? 052.818 in joules, okay? 
So of which you can convert to kilojoules, uh, which is going to be, if you divide by 1,000, that's going to be 24.05 okay, it's not longer two, but eight is going to change this two into three. So that will be kilojoules in this manner. Okay, so like I say, depending with the units, of measurement that you're going to, I mean, the final part that you're going to present your final answer is, but uh, the answer is already there, okay? Then the power now that is required to tra power transmitted by the ramp during the working stroke of the machine itself. So what is going to be the power from there? We have got the work done, we have got the time, so you can calculate power. Remember power is equivalent to work done over the time. Here we've got the time of six seconds. So you can just take advantage of the work done that we already or that you have already calculated here so this can give us the power so that's 5.23 so the power being equivalent to the work done over the time taken and this time is supposed to be in seconds remember that's kilo uh that's joules per second giving us watts so if it is kilo joules per second it's going to give us kilowatts something like that okay so our power is going to be the work done uh, which is in this case in JAWS, this part is going to be 24052.818 uh, divided to uh, the time in seconds. Remember, here from our information, guys, our time is already in seconds. We've got time, which is six seconds. All right, so you're going to divide uh, this by six seconds. Then we've got our power. All right, so if we divide by six, we're going to have our power which is going to be 4,008.808. So like I say, this is joules per second, which is in watts. So your answer is in watts, or you can convert to kilowatts, which is divided by 1,000, it's gonna be 4,00, and uh, A, this changes to nine, that will be kilowatts in this case. All right, so that is what we had uh, from the given information. We can obtain power from the work done and the time. So all you need is to also try by all means to play around with the formulas. Okay, try, try to play around with your formulas from your formula. All right, on the other part on 5.3, we are now give. So 5.3, we are given now that uh, here, the plungers of a three cylinder. So take note, this is a three cylinder. Uh, a single acting pump has a diameter of uh, 10 centimeters, okay, so here we are given uh, a three cylinder, in this case, having a, a diameter of, so we are given a diameter of 10 centimeters. So this, if you convert to meters, divide by 100 is going to give us uh, 0 0.1 meters, okay. A, each, uh, that is each because there are three cylinders and the stroke length of uh, 15 centimeters each also. So we are given the stroke length, which you can write as H uh, for the stroke length or L, whatever that you want. Uh, that is uh, 15 centimeters, 0, 0.15 in meters if you divide by uh, 100. And also we are given the pressure, that is the pressure during the delivery stroke is four megapascal. So the pressure here, is of four megapascals. Calculate the power required to drive the pump at 130 revs per minute if the efficiency of the motor is only 85%. So we have got the speed that is uh, measured in revs uh, per minute in this case and uh, the efficiency of uh, 85%. So I want you to be careful because here, if you check on your memo, it's actually a mistake which happened uh, on that power. If you are to consider the power in this case, we are going to apply this formula that our power is going to be taken from uh, the pressure times the, uh, times the volume in this case. So you can just write uh, power here is equivalent uh, to pressure uh, times the volume. I'm going to have another question paper. Uh, basically, if you check, uh, I think it must be November 2020, I'm going to present that one to you also so that you will see uh, how you're actually supposed to answer these typical questions. All right. So this is power, which is pressure times volume. But we have, we have got the pressure, yes, but we are going to consider on our presentation here, we are going to present, we are going to have our speed also must be there and the efficiency. So the speed here is supposed to be in revs per second when you're calculating power. 
All right, so we are going to consider that later on. What about the the volume, this one? Where do we have our volume in this case? Actually, we know that um, from this consideration, okay, let's just put it this way here. Don't want to confuse you. I want you to see this properly. Uh, on the volume, we were supposed to have it from the area times uh, the given uh, height, which is the stroke length. So height times stroke length, gives us the area in this case but you are going to multiply this by the number of cylinders that we have which is three so whatever that you have here we are going to multiply by by three so the area we know that the area is given from uh, pi d squared so this is going to be uh pi uh, d squared over four that is the area times the height times three which is the number of the cylinders that you're given in this case so this gives us the volume so let's calculate our volume first and see what you're gonna have so the volume is going to be pi times the diameter in meters that is 0 comma 1 squared so we've got uh 0 comma 1 squared everything over four times the stroke length which is our height of 0 comma 1 5 so this is 0 comma 1 5 times 3 uh, this is going to give us our volume in this case. All right, so our volume is going to be something like uh, 3,5, uh, 3, 4. So you're going to obtain 3,5, 3, 4 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 3. That's times 10 to the power of minus 3 to 3 decimal place from your calculator. So just take the value as it is from your calculator. All right, so this is the volume. So I want you to be careful now when you are calculating the power because there are some adjustments that you're supposed to do. And I want to correct that part that you had from your memo, uh, or especially on the efficiency, because here we are supposed to have our power as, all right, so we are going to have our power here as the pressure times the volume. So our pressure of four mega Pascal, that is going to be four times 10, to the exponent of six times the volume that we got here, which is three comma uh, five three four times 10 to the exponent of negative three. Now what you're going to do, consider the speed, which is in revs per second. Here we are given revs per minute. So we are going to divide by 60 so that this is in revs per, per minute. So you're going to consider the speed, multiply by the speed in revs Per, per second. Then for the efficiency, you are not going to multiply that. It is 85% uh, effective. So meaning to say we are going to have this as one over the efficiency, which is actually the same as writing as 100 over 85. We are going to, not 85 over 100 like you to multiply with the decimal part no so here you have to consider when you are dealing with the power so this part here be very very careful it's going to be 100 over 85 of which if you check your memo it was given as 85 divided by 100 which is a mistake so i want us to correct that part all right so this is going to give us the power which is going to be 36,000. so you're going to obtain something like 36,000 uh 032 comma nine four one in this case so this is our power which is measured in watts so this can be converted to kilowatts okay so our p which is representing power in kilowatts if we divide by 1000 this is going to give us 36 comma zero three two nine and so forth which is going to be zero three uh three in kilowatts the nine is going to change the two into three so that is going to be uh, the final answer for the power in this case. All right, so that's what we had, guys, for the all of this part, uh, the all of the question uh, in this case, having uh, a total of 15 marks. So these are the questions that actually you must be, expect to be having on hydraulics, uh, actually, especially this part. Like I said, I'm going to present another question similar to this. It's very, very, very similar, especially from the beginning of the question here. Everything is just actually similar. So I'm going to present another question to you guys so that you will see how do they ask these questions and how are you supposed to answer those typical questions. For now, that's what we had from Amazon African Motives uh, till we meet again.